Before we do the actual lumbar puncture procedure, I wanna go over some of the basic anatomy. What space are we trying to get to with our needle and what are some of the things that might get in the way? So when we're trying to pull off the CSF, we're pulling it from the subarachnoid space around the spine. Remembering that in an adult and larger kids, the spine ends at about L1. So you can actually use any space between L2 and L5. When we're looking for the anatomical space that's gonna be the easiest to get to, it's typically gonna be L4, L5, or L3, L4. So when I'm trying to find that space and get my needle in there, you wanna palpate the posterior aspect of the superior iliac spine. That's gonna be your big hip bones that you feel on the back of the patient. Once you palpate those laterally, you move medially, and that'll bring you to the posterior spinous process of L4. And you can feel that. It's right in the midline of the spine. You'll feel that bony prominence. If you move downward, you'll feel a space until you feel the bony prominence of L5. Similar, if you go up, you'll have a space, and then you'll feel the bony prominence of L3. And it's that space that you're trying to get into. So when we're directing our needle, you want to go palpate that L4 and go just below it. And that's where you're going to introduce your needle into the subcutaneous tissue. And when we talk about, well, what angle should we have that needle, you're not going to be doing it parallel to the floor, right? You need to actually angle it a little cephalad towards the patient's umbilicus because what you're trying to do is get into that space along that angle of the posterior spinous process of L5 and L4, or L4 and L3, if that's where you're at. Which brings me to the next point. When you're introducing your spinal needle, you're gonna be going through three ligaments. The supraspinal ligament, which basically goes on the posterior aspect of the uh, posterior spinal processes down the spine. That's the first ligament you'll go through. And then you're actually gonna go through the ligament that's between the spinous processes. That's the interspinous ligament. And that last really thick ligament, the ligamentum flavum, is the one you pop through before you get into the subarachnoid space. So when you're introducing that needle, you should feel some resistance as you're going through those ligaments and then that give as you break through that final ligament, the ligamentum flavum. Noting that in some elderly adults, those ligaments can be calcified and be, can be actually difficult to get through. The next thing to remember is when you are hitting bone, right? So say you have your, your needle introduced and you're going forward and you hit bone. That means you're most likely hitting the bone, the superior aspect of the inferior, in this case, L5, posterior spinous process. You'll be hitting it. That's why you want to pull out to the subcutaneous space, redirect a little more cephalad upward, and start again until you get to where you want to be. In contrast, you can also be angled to cephalad, right? So if you're going way, way up at the head, you can sometimes just be hitting the bone of the superior posterior spinous process. In this case, it'd be L4. So if you're tapping that, pull back, think about your anatomy, and maybe redirect until you get into that space. So my approach to this, because this is really where it gets a little frustrating, we're going and we're hitting bone and we're hitting bone and we're hitting bone, is first, positioning of the patient. You want to try to open up that space. And the way you're going to do that is if the patient is in the lateral decubitus position, you're going to have them bring their knees up to their chest, kind of like they're doing a cat huddle, just really opening up that lower spine. If they're in the seated position, I'm going to have them seated on the gurney, and I'm going to have them bend forward and rest their arms on a bedside stand with a pillow. Again, just trying to open up that space to really make it large and easy for that introduction. The second thing I'll do is when I'm in that midline and I'm hitting bone, I don't just stop. If I hit bone, I'll pull out and I just redirect almost in a fanning uh, direction from the top to the bottom until you find where you need to be. A lot of times it can be really small micro adjustments that gets you into that spot. Now that we've seen the anatomy, let's actually do the procedure. Mm -hmm. 